and welcome to 10 tips for presenting at a conference. So the very first tip is to know your audience. So one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that you might have written a paper on your topic, but a paper is not going to look the same when you try to present it. So one of the things you want to make sure you're doing is you are keeping the content on your slides or for your presentation simple. You want to make sure that you are giving them the information that's needed, that it's straightforward, it's to the point, that it's not over the top. Your teacher might have understood what your presentation or your paper was about, but now will your audience have that same background? So you want to keep all of those in mind as you're going. It's important for your presentation to have a structure. So have a clear introduction. All right, this is what my presentation is going to be about. Then have that body, the, the main point. What are you going to talk about? What are you actually presenting on? And then conclude. What is the conclusion for this particular research? One of the things you want to keep in mind is to use simple language. And if you have to use technical terms, you need to explain them. Are those technical terms actually critical? Or will your audience automatically know the same technical terms as you do? If they aren't, then you want to make sure you explain those technical terms in such a way that any person in the audience will be able to understand and still comprehend what your presentation is about. And then of course you can provide a recap on the main points if needed. So if you really want to hammer home that this is the most important point of your paper, you might want to talk about it throughout your presentation. So this is going to help um, make sure everyone's on the same page as you as you're doing your presentation. The second tip is to create an outline. This is going to be very critical to you. So this is going to help you break your presentation out into sections. So having an introduction, having the body, having the conclusion, so you can break it out. Where do you want there to be slides? Where do you need there to be slides to break up the content? And then the next part is once you've created that outline, you can use it as a reference tool. This is great. It can be kind of your notes as you go. And one thing you want to keep in mind is keywords. As you can see, my slides don't have a ton of words. These are just the words that I think I need to see in order to be able to present. So keep all of that in mind that you don't want to have word for word what you're going to say on your slide. You can. If there happens to be a quote that you think is really important, put it out there. Put that quote there. Who is it by? But you're going to want to read that quote out loud and then uh, have the rest of them be just, you know, the keywords that are going to inspire you to think, oh, this is what I want to talk about on this slide. Use your outline to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice is so important. You don't have slides and instead you're just using an outline. It's okay. You don't have to have a bunch of slides if you're not a slide kind of person, but you still having that outline is going to give you some way to keep track of your different points and to keep yourself moving along the way you want to be. What you don't want to do though, is you do not want to read either your slides or your outline out loud. So if you have a lot of notes, don't read it. And this is not the way to give a presentation is to read everything. It's one of the reasons I put just simple keywords on my slide because this means I can't just read my slides. I actually do have to think and interact with my audience. All right, tip three, rehearse and scope out your space. So I rehearse all the time. I am a huge fan of rehearsing. Usually what I do is I'm sitting in my office, moving my hands and I'm saying all kinds of crazy things. I get it all out before I go to actually do the presentation. This is a really good idea. And if you want, you can ask a friend, you can ask a colleague to rehearse with because this is going to give you an idea 
of what it actually feels like to give that presentation. I have done this before. I have had colleagues tell me, all right, Nancy, well, that was a pretty good presentation, but maybe you could do this so they can give you some feedback too. Rehearse in the mirror. This is not something that I like to do. I don't like to see myself, but if this is something that would be helpful to you to actually see, what do you look like as you're giving that presentation? That can be really helpful. You can film or watch, or with the virtual conference, you can pre-record this thing and see, you know, does it look really good on the screen? Oh no, that looked really bad. Or wow, my voice is really quiet. Maybe I need to talk louder. So all of these things are going to be important to making sure that presentation is exactly what you want. When you're in the heat of the moment, you might not even realize what you're doing. You're just so passionate. You're so into it. And so you might be doing something that you don't want to be. So take the time, film, watch, record, get used to what it's like actually presenting. Learn where to breathe. All right, so my trick for me is I will talk really, really fast. I get really nervous. And so I always have my friend, the water bottle, right next to me. So when I start to freak out, I look at my water bottle and I think, okay, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to drink a little water and then I'm going to continue on. So as you're rehearsing, this is going to help you know where are those breathing points where are you maybe going to get nervous and so take a moment take a breath and then continue on and you might need to have that water bottle handy as, as kind of your breathing point to slow you down but find out what works for you visit your space so if you're doing an online presentation visit it like check it out do you know how to use the zoom room you don't Ask some questions. Maybe um, when you're talking to the SRC committee, the Student Research Conference Committee, we can answer a lot of the questions that you might have. How is this going to work? What does it look like? What does my space look like? So don't be afraid to ask questions or visit your space. This is going to really help you get to know what you might need to really do this presentation in a successful way. Tip four, visuals. It's okay if you don't have any visuals whatsoever. Maybe you don't have a presentation. Maybe you're just going to stand there and talk. Um, maybe you're going to do something else. And so all of these things are going to be helpful to you. Or maybe you really want to have some graphics. But keep in mind that your graphics should make sense to your presentation. If you're just throwing pictures up there because you're like, oh, I have a slide, I must have a picture. That is not the best way to do it. For people like me, the whole time I'm going to be focused on that picture. What does that picture mean? And if your picture doesn't mean anything, then I will have lost the whole purpose of your presentation because I was so focused on figuring out the picture that I didn't pay attention to what you were saying. So make sure your pictures, your graphics fit with what your point that you're trying to make. Less is more. So you may have noticed that a lot of my slides are not filled to the brim. You don't need to have every solitary word or every solitary space on your slide filled. It's great to have white space. White space is wonderful for your audience. So keep that in mind. And then for the visual, whatever you might have brought, have some kind of backup. Backup, backup, backup. So if you have a flash drive, have it also on your OneDrive, in your email, some other way. I have learned from personal experience that the times I don't have a backup are the times when everything goes wrong and I have to just do something on the fly. So definitely keep in mind that it's best to have some sort of backup so that if one system doesn't work, you're prepared with something else. Tip five, adhere to the time limits. So if your conference gives you a time limit, if you have 20 minutes, stick to the 20 minutes. This is very important. So if you have 15 minutes for a presentation and five minutes for questions, then practice so that you know, all right, it takes 15 minutes to say what I wanna say, 
It's five minutes for the questions. This is all going to work out. Of course, last minute changes might occur. So maybe the person before you talked for 25 minutes. We're going to really try to keep that to a minimum for the student research conference. But if something happens like that, you might have to speed up a little what you were going to say. Or maybe you talk too fast. That's usually my problem. Is there anything extra that I can add? Um, and of course, you can have a stopwatch. If that makes you more comfortable, I'm one of these people, I glance at my time all the time. How am I doing? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Should I add something in? So keep that in mind. Is there anything you can add to your presentation to make it a little longer if you talk too fast? Or is there anything you can take out to make it shorter if, you know, you really got on a tangent? Sometimes that happens. I get talking um, about things that maybe I shouldn't have talked about at the beginning. I got excited um, and I talked about something I hadn't planned on. So is there anything that you can take out if that's necessary? Tip six is appearance. It's very important that for every conference you want to dress business casual. So you want to have a professional atmosphere. So in the virtual world, we are all used to well, I'm in my jeans, or I'm in my sweatpants, I'm in comfy clothes all the time. That's not really acceptable in the in a conference presentation. We're going to want to see you. We're going to want to see that you look professional. But it's also really important that you feel good in what you're wearing. So if you are wearing something that's really tight and you feel really constricted, that's not going to be as productive to you. You're not going to be focusing on giving the presentation, but fit, you're going to be thinking about those clothes that you're wearing and how you aren't comfortable in them. So if you have really uncomfortable shoes, they might look gorgeous, but they might be actually distracting you from giving the presentation that you really want to be giving. So keep all those things in mind. You want to dress as if you're going to an interview, but you don't want to dress so that you're so uncomfortable that you can't focus on what you need to. So, so find that good comfort level. And if you aren't sure what business casual is, you can Google it. You can also ask any of us uh, in the SRC committee. We're always happy to answer those things. And most important, no gum. So you might have your friendly bottle of water next to you to help you breathe, but chewing gum is a big no-go. Definitely don't have that. You shouldn't be eating anything when you are presenting. Tip seven, start confidently and transition smoothly. So you should have an introduction. I always present with Hi, my name is Nancy Messina, and I'm the Director of Reference Services at Linda Wood Library, and today I'm going to, in this particular case, what are the 10 tips for presenting at a conference? So, I know my own name. You have no idea how often I fear that I'm going to mess up my own name. So don't assume that you know what your introduction is going to sound like. Practice it, and be confident. I am Nancy Messina. This is what I'm going to say. And then have transitions. So throughout, how, how are you going to transition from point one to point two? You can use any of these words. Furthermore, in addition to meanwhile, you can also have finally. So what does your conclusion look like? Are you going to ask questions? How are you going to transition into that? So keep that in mind. You want to have all of these things laid out. And how are you going to end your presentation? I usually end with, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this presentation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. So think about what do you want to say throughout your whole presentation? Because it might seem so obvious, but if you don't practice all the pieces, that's when you forget to even introduce yourself. You forget what your own name is and you just get nervous. So keep all of that in mind. Tip eight, make eye contact and smile. So if you're having fun, your audience will be as well. So they're going to be more engaged if you're smiling, if you're calm. Um, I realize that presenting can be very nerve wracking. I usually start off so fast and I get really excited. And then 
I have to calm myself down, right? Don't get so excited. Bring your excitement, bring your passion to that presentation. And as you do that, your audience will become more engaged. You want to stand straight or sit straight. Don't slouch. This is not going to help you present. And then as you're making eye contact with your group, don't don't stare at one person, so that's really important. So we have that oscillate. So you're gonna be like the oscillating fan. I'm looking around my room, I'm looking around my room. But also you can glance down at your notes. So if you need a bright break from looking at your audience, that's okay. You can look at you can look at your audience, you can look at your notes. Maybe you want to look at your slides. That's why they're here. They're here to help you. Um, so having all of those things can kind of keep you going, hopefully help you remain calm. Tip nine, encourage questions and discussions. So at the end, usually there is a question section. Enjoy it, get excited. These people are here to learn about your topic. So if they have questions, be excited, but you also want to be professional. So if someone asks a question, be professional in your answer. So you don't know the answer to a question or if you're not sure what someone asked, it's okay to ask a clarifying question of your own. So explain what were you asking in that particular case or how could they explain it a little further? If you don't know the answer to a question, that is okay too. You might not be an expert or maybe you didn't do research on the particular piece that this person was, is interested in. And, and that happens to us all. So not having an answer is much better than just trying to make one up on the spot. Just say, oh, I, didn't, I did not research that particular thing, but that might be something to consider in the future. And if no one has any questions, don't be upset about that. There are plenty of times where I end a presentation and the room is silent. And I always think, wow, I did such a great job that no one has any questions. So be confident in yourself. If no one has questions, that's okay. Or what you can also do is say, here's my contact information. If you have any further questions, or if you want to know more about my topic later, you can always contact me. So some people are afraid to ask questions in a room of other people, but they're always happy to email you. So that's another great way to kind of end the presentation. And then tip 10, the final one, ensure closing is natural. So of course you have your question slide and you have your contact information up there. You also want to thank your audience. Thank you so much for coming. And then you can leave the stage, not the room. So maybe you don't want to be up, up there at the, the, the podium. But one of the things you want to remember is that um, maybe people aren't very comfortable when you're up there, but if you're in the room mingling with other people, I've had so many people walk up to me after that fact. So you don't want to be the first person to rush out of that room. You want to be there mingling, um, but maybe not at the, at the very front. So these are the 10 tips to presenting at a conference. If you have any questions, please reach out to the SRC for the Student Research Conference, and we will be happy to help you. Make sure that your conference experience is a positive one.